Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and I know what you're thinking. No, this video is not a clickbait. However, I have to tell you, this technology is definitely still in development. So a couple of days ago, my friend Meghna, who is an awesome illustrator, do check out her work. So she told me about this amazing AI technology that would generate images based on text queries. I was so shocked that I had to share it with you. You know, imagine typing an armchair in the shape of an avocado and these are the results you get. Isn't that life altering? Well, that's for you to figure out. In this video, we're going to be talking about this AI technology and also look at some actual demonstrations to see for ourselves whether this can alter the way we see digital imaging. From an x-ray vision of a walnut to a 3D model of a famous personality, we're going to check it all. So without any further ado, I'm super excited. Let's get started. Back in the magical world of AI, this time and the technology that we're talking about is called DAL-E. It's named after the surreal artist Salvador DAL-E and also the Pixar's robot, remember? Wall-E. So they combine that together to name it DAL-E. Now, as we have discussed before, it generates images based on text queries and the way it works is that it works on text image pairs. So let's say you entered a text description. It takes up individual words, links, images, to it and then combines them together according to the description. It's a brilliant combination. Now keep in mind it's still in development so we cannot completely type in descriptions from scratch but we do have some demonstrations that we can look at. So first of all let's start with simple combination examples. So this my friend is an example of a text prompt and these are the results generated by AI. Artificial intelligence just so that we are clear. All right so as you can see it says an illustration of a baby daikon a radish in a tutu walking a dog simply a combination of three things based on the description that it gave and have a look it's walking a dog which is a link between them there is a dog which is an object there is a baby daikon radish I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry about that, but that is an object. It is wearing a tutu where tutu is an object and it kept in mind that it's wearing it. It just didn't place a tutu anywhere else. It just made sure that the radish object is kind of wearing it. Isn't that interesting? The way it combines those things. Now you can definitely change this. Even though this is a demo, you have the ability to change it. So you can click on it and change it to whatever you wish. So in this case, we're going to choose baby fox in a tutu. Have a look. <laughs> it just combined that perfectly. You can also change this to in a cape and take a look. The baby fox is wearing a cape. Now, instead of walking a dog, we can choose flying a kite and it still works. Look at the way it combines objects and it combines them according to the context right there in the description. Let's look at one more example. Now it's an example we were talking about earlier, armchair in the shape of an avocado. So instead of armchair, you can choose whatever you wish. So I want a clock, right? Again, it gave the clock an avocado shape. So the way it combines images, morphs them together and even bends them and does all sorts of things and even in some cases creates shadows to make it realistic. The way AI works is just, just life altering. I got to tell you that. Anyway, so this is the clock and in the shape of an avocado, form of an avocado or style, you can choose it. So I'm going to choose, keep it to shape and instead of avocado, let's choose turtle and take a look. Take a look. Now, some of the images might not be accurate, but most of them are. Some are even a little weird where it placed a clock in the head area. But then again, take a look at it. Now, this might not be absolutely accurate, but, you know, this AI work is just brilliant. Now, there's also one more sentence, one more way in which we can modify it. So a clock imitating a turtle, is it would be the same thing. But here you have one more variable, which is shape, form or style. Anyway, so instead of a turtle, what if we choose donut, which more suits up with a clock because it's around as well. And take a look. This really gives us a lot of opportunities if you're into design and you want to just experiment with different concepts. Now, if you're not already mind blown, here's a mind bending feature of Dal E. And that is modifying an object. What if we say modify the shape of a lunchbox 
to a triangle. Can Dal E do it? <laughs> Let's test it. So in this case, we have a pentagonal green clock, right? Let's try to change that. So instead of clock, we will choose we can choose actually anything, but let's choose lunchbox, all right? And it gives you a pentagonal lunchbox. In some cases, it might not, but it's still impressive. Now, instead of a pentagon, let's choose triangle. And now we have lots of triangle lunchbox styles. You can choose whatever color you wish as well. So we wanted a purple lunchbox and take a look. That's how it modifies an object. Let's take a look at one more example. Now this takes it to even higher extremes. So here we have a cube made of porcupines. So the AI made a cube with all the images of porcupines and, and it also maintained the 3D structure of it with lights and shadows. I don't know what to call it. So instead of a cube, we can choose even a sphere made of porcupines. And these are the images that you would not find in a stock image website. So a sphere made of, let's say, jelly. And now we have all the jelly spheres gives us a lot of concept ideas. And if it really develops, imagine what it could do to the art of compositing. So instead of jelly, if we choose a very random thing, let's go for a keyboard, a sphere made of keyboard. How it's going to do it? Oh my. I don't know how to react to this. It really did make a sphere out of a keyboard. Like, what is it? I really want you to pause this video and try it for yourself right now. I'm telling you, you'll be mind blown. Now, this artificial intelligence not only controls the attributes of an object, but also can control how many times the object appears in the image. Here, we have a collection of glasses sitting on a table. Now, glasses can be anything. It can be spectacles. It can be actual glasses, uh, tumblers. Anyway, so instead of glasses, what if we choose clock? I don't know why we're choosing a lot of clocks today. So we have a collection of clocks right there. We can control how many we see. So we can have just one. We can have uh, probably two. We can have four. We can even have a row of or a pile of. Let's choose a pile of. So it didn't pile up pretty well, but here it kind of did. It kind of looks morphed. But either way, this is a pile, a great pile right there. Anyway, so we will choose a row of, right? And instead of blocks, what if we choose class? We have a row of class, which is interesting. We have a row of nails which is also interesting. And we can also have a row of chips, see, sitting on a table. Now keep in mind, all of these images that you see are drawn using this AI. Sounds scary, isn't it? Do you want to even take it up a notch? What about controlling multiple objects simultaneously? Now that would be something. Now before we move forward, I wanted to let you know that the success rate depends upon how the caption is phrased. So if the text description is a lot more complex, the success rate might be lower. Sometimes it confuses with images. It really depends upon how many objects are there. If there are large number of objects, it might confuse things. But I'm definitely confident that it only will get better from here. Because if you look at technology, 10 years ago, we couldn't have imagined that Photoshop could automatically select a subject with hair so perfectly. We couldn't even imagine that we could replace guys with one click, but now we can do it. So I'm definitely positive about this technology. Let's take a look at some examples. Now, as you can see in this example, we have a ton of variables. How many? One, two, three, four, five. Five variables. Imagine that. Imagine writing a sentence and it takes in all of the variables and also the context of the description and creates an image according to it. If, if I don't know if even humans can do it. So here we have a small red block sitting on a green block. So instead of small, we choose large. Large one sitting on a green block. It became large. So instead of red, let's choose green. So green sitting on a green. So sometimes it might confuse things. As, as you can see, some of the images are not perfect. But look at this image. It got it right and maybe some other image it might have gotten them right. Now, in this case, it is sitting side by side, but it's okay. This one, it got it all right. So as I told you, the more variables you bring into perspective, the more errors they're going to be because this is just a crazy challenge for this AI. Anyway, so instead of block, what if we choose 
elephant, a, a large green elephant, can it really do it? It really can. It really drew the elephant. I can't believe this. So instead of sitting on, what if we choose standing to the left off? All right. So now it is standing to the left off a green mouse. Yes, there's a mouse there. Okay. So instead of green, what if we choose a blue mouse? Can it really draw it? Take a look. It really did. Now think about it. How many variables? Like large green elephant standing to the left of a small blue mouse? Is, is this something you would find on stock website? Or even if you Google it in Google Images, would you find an image like that? I'm not really sure. So instead of large, what if I choose small? So it's a small green elephant sitting uh, on the right of a blue mouse. We still have tons of example and it is a small elephant, right? Now let's try this on Google image search just to compare if we can find something like this. A large blue mouse. Let's search this. We'll look at it. Surprise, surprise. It's just not getting the concept. We typed the same thing. An illustration of a small green elephant standing to the left of a large blue mouse. There is no mouse in any of these pictures. There's one here and maybe just one getting the context, but still it's not a blue mouse and it's not a green elephant. Have a look at doll E. At least it's better than Google Images. I gotta tell, if Google acquires this, it'll be huge. Now the AI also claims that you can even change the perspective of a particular image. So let's say we have an extreme close up view of an animal right there. So instead of an extreme close up, we can have a bird's eye view. Do we have a bird's eye view right there? Aerial view might be the same. So this is an aerial view, which is not a bird's eye view exactly, but still we do have an aerial view. Now, what about ground level view? We also have ground level views as well. So we can also have eye level view, side view, front view, rear view. Let's go for front view. That didn't change much. There's a lot of errors right there, but still. So uh, we can also have a spherical panorama. So this one, as you can see, we have a spherical panorama. We can also change uh, the animal right there. So let's choose eagle. So definitely take a look. Spherical panorama of an eagle. Super cool, isn't it? So sitting in a field. Now we can have it to sitting on a mountain. And there we have it, spherical panorama of an eagle sitting on a mountain. So we definitely can work with perspectives right there. So for the same scene, what if we change the perspective? Let's try it one more time. So we have the same eagle sitting on a mountain, just change the perspective right there. So let's choose extreme close up view. See, it's still on a mountain and it is still an eagle. So let's change it one more time. Let's choose high aerial view and we have a high aerial view of the eagle on a mountain. Now, what if I told you that this AI could also modify the surface of an object using a 3D style that you choose? That would be, I don't have adjectives for it. I'm gonna be honest with you. So in this case, we have an animal. So again, let's go for turtle this time. And we have chosen made of voxels. Have a look. It's rendered in that way in 3D. It's crazy. So instead of voxels, uh, we can choose low polygon mesh and we have a turtle in low polygon mesh sitting in a field. So we can choose sitting on a mountain and we have a turtle low polygon mesh sitting on a mountain. Look at the generation right there. Look at the way it just modifies the surface. It's just act. Let's move on to the next example. Now, as we teased in the beginning of the video, it can generate a 3D image of a well-known figure. Yes, by looking at a lot of images. Let me show it to you in action. So here we have a bust of Homer, Homer as in the author of Iliad and Odyssey, not Homer Simpsons. Although if it were Homer Simpsons, I would be pretty excited. Either way, so we can choose any one of these. Let's choose Alexander the Great and take a look different portraits of Alexander. And here's the great part. You can rotate it. So it looks at different images and creates a 3D scene looking at different images. And did you notice a very specific trait right there? Look at the lighting. As you rotate the head, 
the lighting is the same. In this case, the light is coming from the right hand side. No matter how much we rotate the head, no matter how many different images it goes through, the lighting is the same. See? This is crazy, crazy intense. Now, as I told you already, this AI has X-ray vision. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Don't think that. So let's go for airplane cross-section of an airplane and it gives you a cross-section of an airplane. It might not be perfect, but it really does give you what would be like a cross-section. So let's try something else. Let's choose strawberry and it really does give you a cross-section of a strawberry. Now I do admit that finding these images are going to be kind of easy, but when this technology completely develops, I can imagine what you guys can be searching. Let's move on. Now, in the very first few examples, we talked about context. We talked about how a radish can be wearing a tutu and walking a dog. So keep in mind, it could have just combined those photos in a way where this is the radish, here is the dog, and maybe here is the tutu. But it didn't do that. It analyzed the entire context and made sure that the radish is walking a dog and also the radish is wearing a tutu. So similarly, this takes it even a notch further. Let's say you're opening a store and you want to take a look at how your store is going to look like. So you can tell the AI to create a storefront with a particular text written on top of it. So here we have a storefront with open AI written right there. So instead, let's choose Skynet. Now keep in mind, these are generated. Take a look. See, these are all generated automatically. I understand we can definitely do it in Photoshop, but this is just one click thing. So instead of a storefront, we can also have a grocery bag. So if you're branding, this can be very helpful. If you're into design, it's just choose what you want, choose what text you want, and the AI automatically does it for you. Now, speaking of designs, let us look more into fashion designing or interior designing examples. So here we have an image of a mannequin, male mannequin dressed in black and flannel shirt and black jeans. So we can absolutely change it according to our wish and see different options, especially in the fashion industry. So male mannequin dressed in an orange, so we can change the color. So I like to wear black, so we're gonna choose black or right now we are wearing blue. So let's choose blue instead. So instead of a second color, let's choose t-shirt. So we have simple blue t-shirt and we can combine it with anything we want. So we want, let's say gray jeans. So we have blue t-shirt and gray jeans. Super cool. You even have a female mannequin. So we can have her dressed in white instead of leather jacket. We can choose a pullover sweater and we can have her wearing a skirt, jeans, whatever you wish. So let's choose jeans and instead of gold, and by the way, which is a very rare color for a jeans. See, it still managed to create it. Gold jeans and white pullover sweater. That's an absolute crazy combination, but it still has it. Now, as you might have guessed by now, it can also combine bizarre, absolutely unrelated concepts. Take a look at this. A snail made of harp. And it still made it. Take a look. Snail, there's a harp to it. This one is perfect. Just take a look. This is just brilliant. So we can have anything made of anything. So we can have a kangaroo made of harp. Look. Great ideas for people who create statues. So kangaroo made of, wow, we have ton of examples. What if we choose eggplant? A kangaroo made of eggplant. I got it, hands down, man, hands down. I, I, if I had hats, I would just do hats off. I rest my case, my friend. I just rest my case. This technology is crazy. It's just scary, crazy, and I don't even know what to express. I'm just losing my mind at the moment, right now, as of recording this video. My battery is dying, but I'm losing my mind because of this technology. There is no doubt that there needs to be more work done to make this technology usable for photographers, designers, or even artists, but you still can see where this is going. Now imagine if this can one day create photos of such a high quality that would match up with an actual photo taken with an actual photographer, with an actual physical camera, I really don't know what would happen to photography. I really wonder. What do you think? What are your thoughts? 
let's have a discussion about this. Let's talk about this in the comments. I'm looking forward to what you have to say about this. Thank you so much again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I could show you something new and this was a mind blasting new. Either way, uh, if you like this video, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. This video is made possible by this amazing and brilliant Patreons who make Fix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.